Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what month we're rewinding to, and see the cards that I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I like to stop by and revisit a past sheet load of cards. This is the Sheet Load Rewind series, and if you like today's video and want to see more, I do have the playlist linked in that description box below. Let's go ahead and find out which month we're rewinding to. Today, we are going to revisit August 2020. This sheet originally called for six pieces of 6x6 pattern paper. I guess Lyndon is super excited about this rewind as well. Again, this called for 6x6 pattern paper and showed you how to yield six cards. Today, I am only going to use three pieces of 6x6 pattern paper and will yield three cards. Let's go ahead and see if we can take a look at the sketch. So here is the sketch and originally it called for a little piece of cardstock here that you would stamp your sentiment on. But today, instead of cardstock, I'm going to be using some vellum for just a different look to that image and sentiment that I'll be stamping. I guess Lyndon has had enough of sheet load rewind. Maybe we'll see her later. At the end of the video, I will tell you how you can download the August 2020 sheet load if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'll be using. For my cards today, I decided to use some goodies from the latest Not Too Shabby box of the month, which was called Fall Sunshine. I chose these three pieces of pattern paper from the 6x6 pad. And for my sentiments, I'll be using these two right here, which includes some floral bits and a sentiment to go with it. I thought that would look nice on these cards. Now, unfortunately, this box is sold out, but you might have yours on the way. You might have already gotten it. Or even if you didn't get it, you can use the supplies you have to make these cards. As I do add more products and tools when I start the process, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by cutting each of my sheets per the instructions on the printable. The only thing I won't do for now is cut that bottom strip to a specific width. Instead, I will save that for later because I want to make sure it fits my stamped image piece. If your pattern paper has a specific orientation like mine does for the jars, you'll want to make sure you know that before you make that first cut. I'm going to cut five and a quarter inches off this piece and once again that strip goes to the side for later and once I have my five and a quarter inch tall piece I cut it into a piece that is four inches wide and a piece that is two inches wide. I do the same thing for the remaining two pattern papers. I chose to use a black cardstock for the mat that goes behind the tall skinny piece and I'm just going to cut until I get three pieces that are five and a quarter inches tall by two and a quarter inches wide. For CS2 I'm going to be using some vellum and this is also a great piece to use up scraps on. Now before I know what size to cut that to, I'm going to get out my stamp set and measure each of the stamps that I'm going to be using. I ended up deciding that 2 and 3 quarters inches wide was a good fit. I always keep three weights of vellum in my stash. I have a 17 pound, 
a 28 pound and a 36 pound. Now I did want to make sure that whatever image I stamped on this would still be readable on top of a pattern paper. So I brought in each of the vellums and the lighter two were about the same, but still a little bit too sheer. You'll notice the 36 pound, it just kind of mutes that background a little more. So that's the one that I decided to go with. I cut this into strips that were two and three quarters inches wide and then I did some measuring and cutting for the final pieces which I ended up cutting these to three and a quarter inches tall. For the sentiments on the cards I'm going to be using the two in the lower left hand corner of the stamp set and because I am stamping on vellum I need to use stays on. Now I'm trying something to see if I ink it up first with Versamark, if that will help later with cleaning the stamp. So this is totally just a little experiment. Once I had my stamp in place, which was centered toward the top, so I would have room later for my pattern paper strip, I inked it up with the Versamark and then inked it up with the stays on. And I did stamp it a couple times to get a nice solid black. Now I did go ahead and use this sentiment twice and then it was time to clean it off and see if my experiment worked. Well, unfortunately, it didn't really help much that I could tell. So for the next one, which was just a single sentiment, I went ahead and I just stamped it up with the stays on. I will share that off screen later, I used Tailored Expressions Stamper Spritz and it did actually clean off some of that stays on ink. So if you ever place an order there, I would suggest getting it. I actually got mine to clean off stencils because when I did virtual Stamp Joy with my mom and my sister, we realized how well this cleans stencils too. Once the stamping was done, I put together the papers for each card along with a sentiment and then I added those little pattern paper strips to the bottom of each of the sentiments. I added adhesive just a ways across each of the strips and then after those were on there, I brought in a pair of fine tip non-stick scissors and I cut off the excess. Later, you will see how I turned this into a no scraps project by using those pieces that I just snipped off. I brought back in those black cardstock mats and I added the tall skinny strips to each of those. Now it does fill the strip from top to bottom, but there's an eighth of an inch border on the left and right sides. Off screen, I got out three top fold card bases from my stash, and then I just started adding the pattern papers to the front. The big piece, of course, goes down flat, and then I added the matted skinny pattern paper piece toward the left there with about, oh, a quarter of an inch maybe. And then I just set that aside with the sentiment for now and continued putting the other card fronts together. Now normally I would pop this piece up on my card, but because it has vellum, I won't be able to put foam tape behind that. So I'm going to adhere these flat down, but because that right side, it would kind of like flop off the edge because there is a couple layers beneath it. I am doing a little trick here that Christy Marcotte uses often, which is putting some cardstock scraps behind the edge that would hang off. Then I put a little bit of art glitter glue behind where the black stamping was and this way once it was adhered to the card it was nice and level. I added the other two sentiments to the card fronts before moving on. Off camera, I added the scraps to the inside of the card. I just cut one of the sides at an angle and I also chose some golden yellow gems to add to the front. I took three of these for each card and just added it around the stamped focal point. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed this rewind to August 2020. 
If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the printable for free. As always, the sheet load of cards printable is free to subscribers of my channel. Please make sure before you click on the link, which I'll tell you where it's at in just a minute, that you have already clicked on that subscribe button. We do just go on the honor system here. I don't make you email me with any proof or sign up for a mailing list. You will find the link for August 2020 in the description box below, right above my P.O. box. Right below the link, it will say to watch the video for a password, but don't worry, there isn't one. You watching this far is like your password. I hope that you'll do a little rewinding. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.